Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here's another question for you guys. We are going to see which set has more elements. Set A is the interval going from 0 to 1, name the all the real numbers right here, and we do not include the endpoints. And set B is the interval going from negative infinity to positive infinity, and that's just the you know, whole real number line. Well, well, isn't this like super obvious? Because as you can see, a doesn't even have 0 and doesn't have 1, but of course, B does have 0 and 1, and a lot more. So, shouldn't B be the answer? That's it? No. As you guys can probably guess it, what's the answer right here? Yes, they do have the same number of elements, just like the first video that we did a few days ago, right? So, if you haven't seen the video on why the set of all the natural numbers and the set of all the integers, they have the same number of elements, be sure you guys go check that out. Over there, that's called the countable infinity. Right here, when we're talking about real numbers, unfortunately, we cannot count. But the concept is still going to be the same. Here is the deal. To show that two sets have the same number of elements, what do we need? Yes. We need a bijection going from one set to the other, and doesn't really matter which order that you do it. But let me just say, let's go from A to B. Right? Why not? So now, maybe you want to pause the video and think about if you can come up with a one-to-one -one and on-to function, namely a bijection, going from this interval to that interval. And if you can do so, then that means that we do have the same number of real numbers in this set and also that set. So please pause the video and think about this first. Okay, hopefully you guys have a chance to try it. And now let me tell you guys one of my answers right here. And I will call the function to be f. And we are going to go from a to b. And if you want to do it the other way around, that's fine too. Okay, now we have to think about how can we go from 0, 1 to negative infinity, comma, infinity, right? And if you think about the graph of a function, this right here is a domain, so it's just on the x-axis. So you just have a small piece. And this right here is on the y-axis, so you want to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. We better have some vertical asymptotes to help us out, right? So we have to think about how can we use a function that has such a property for this? Well, we do know a function from our trig class, named the tangent x. So let me just talk about this one right here. This is what we know when we have y is equal to tangent x. Well, look at the graph real quick. So as you can see, this right here is clearly 1 to 1 and on 2. It's clearly 1 to 1 because it does pass the horizontal line test, right? And of course, we just want to focus on this part here. This is what we know. But unfortunately, the domain right here is going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We want from 0 to 1. So we have to just kind of change this a little bit, then we can make things happen. And now let's take a look of what exactly that we want. Well, well, let's look at the graph. Hmm, take a look right here. First of all, we have to move the graph to the right, a couple units, right? And as you can see right here, this is of course 0, and that's in between of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And I want to have from 0 to 1. So that means I should have this being right in the middle of that, namely we should have that point being at 1 half. So the first thing is that we will have to move the graph to the right by half of unit. And let's just go ahead and do the math right here. So I'm just going to say that f of x being equal to the following. First of all, I still have tangent. To move the graph to the right hand side by half a unit, we just look at x and then minus 1 half just like the good old days, right? Okay, so that's good. But this is not enough because remember for tangent, the period of tangent right here is pi, right? Hmm, I need the length of the interval to be just one, right? Because we're going from zero to one. So how can we make that happen? Well, well, right here, the reason that the period, period for tangent x is equal to one, it's because you have a 1 in front of the x. Remember, you look at this, the period is equal to pi divided by that coefficient. So we have just pi over 1, which is just pi. 
Here, if you want the period to be just one, namely the length of the interval that we want to be one, all we have to do is pi divided by this number. Well, I just have to do pi divided by pi, so I just have to multiply this by pi. But remember, we did this first, and then we do that, so be sure you put a parenthesis like this. When you multiply this by pi, you can just make the period to be just one, so you will have the vertical asymptotes right here and also right here, namely 0 and 1, and the graph will still look the same, which is still like this. Therefore, that's the answer. So of course, I would just say our function has the formula tangent of pi times x minus 1 half. So this right here will be my answer to this bijection. And of course, you can use other ones as well. Let me just tell you guys some other answers that you may possibly come up with other answers. Uh, okay. So I will leave this for you guys to verify on your own. You can say f of x, another version of the tangent, of course, is just use cotangent. And I will leave this to you guys. Cotangent of pi times x will also do the work as well. But the graph will look different. In fact, cotangent pi x looks like this. Right? And perhaps you can also use some natural log function. And this is the one that might be really surprising. Natural log of 1 over x minus 1. This right here might be harder to come up with. You may just want to have some experience on your own first. If you have this as your function, the inverse of it is nicely equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the x. When you go from b to a instead. Right? And this right here, if you have done like integration of this, which is really cool, you will notice that the graph looks like this. And of course, when you inverse that, you can just get back to the original right here, and you can just work that out as well. So um, these are just the other answers that you can possibly have. But I think this right here is the one perhaps it's easier for us to think about, in my opinion, right? Because we know tangent x much better. Man, this right here, the length is only one. The length right here is infinite. But in terms of the number of elements, they have the same amount in both sets. Very surprising, isn't it? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Anyway, as always, that's it.